I hate you. I feel like this is really close to me. <laughs> and it's glowing and looking at its eyes are over here. Do my friend here? I do. Yeah. That's why it looks like it's looking eyes. at me. <laughs> you didn't mess it up, Lynn. You didn't mess up the. Oh, it's, 360. it's 360. It's 360. It's 360. It's just the eyes that are kind of reading. Mm. All right, it's six o'clock. <clears throat> All right, study session. We'll start with the YMCA discussion updates by Mayor DePinto. All right. Well, we've been having meetings uh, all, all throughout the year on this, uh, mainly with health talk and individuals to. And um, so that's been going well. We plan to finalize. It's about 10, 10 or so people on that. Um, this group is responsible for kind of giving ideas to location. So I think there's about three locations that are going to be floated right now. Um, funding mechanisms, um, stuff like that. Of course, council is going to be involved with all the, after it gets through the, um, just the basic steering committee part, um, it has to have council support on it to move forward and we wouldn't want to do it anywhere else. So um, like the first meeting is to be held in early January, probably the first week. And other than that, Happy to answer any questions anyone has on that. What's our involvement? Involvement. Um, they, a lot of it's similar to the steering committee. It's whether what you want to do for funding, whether you want to um, try to seek private donations, all that stuff, um, whether you think that it's reasonable to ask the, um, the people for like a, a bond or um, something like that. I'm guessing you're going to say no, James, but I mean, it, there's different... Well, is, is that standard that the YMCA basically asked the city to build it for? It's so, yeah, it's not. Um, is that what's going on? Like I, it, yeah, so it. they ask for partnerships. Um, it's very common for cities to do it. The last one they did it with Shelton, and yeah, they let out a lot of it. Schools are usually involved in it. There's a lot of different partnerships. The city is a key partnership, obviously. The schools will be a key partnership. Different health organizations will be. Um, a lot of different groups, local groups as well. What's the benefit to the you know, residents? I think I the mean, biggest thing, I mean, other than just having it. Yeah. So I'm sure you've heard, as I have over the years, that one of the biggest things that people want in Yelm is a swimming pool. Yeah. That's going to be, you know, all the conversations that I've had um, from the very get go have been, have been starting with we have to have an indoor swimming pool or it's a non starter for us. Um, what I mean more of is, if you're asking for the people that live here to build it, do they get, say, if, if you have a city of Yelm address, mm -hmm. do you have a discounted membership? Do you have something like that? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I, that's all on the table, but absolutely. We can talk about because that. The way I look at it, I mean, me personally, you already know, I'm going to say, figure it out on your own. But the world doesn't work the way that I want it to. So if you're going to be asking, for the people in Yelm um, to build this place. Obviously, there's ongoing costs of running the place, so not everyone can just go for free, but I think there should be an ask that if you have a Yelm address, then you should have a discounted membership for that location. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. The other um, other benefits, like for schools, there is, like, could, we could bring back our swim team, we can provide other um, sources for like senior citizens and all that for exercise, rehabilitation, um, health care. There's talks of uh, Providence coming in and helping out with a certain section. There's other talks as well for other health care providers, but that's just what we've been discussing right now. Yeah, my understanding was not so much how much it costs to build, but in how much it costs to run every year. So that would be ongoing funding. Not from the city, no. So it's all um, from outside. Yeah. Or Once the capital okay. campaign is completed and they actually build the facility, it would shift over to the YMCA managing it mm. um, and all that. That's so, where membership dues cover. Yeah, exactly. and then but there's still options like like you said, and I agree. I, I think there should be, um, you know, if Yelm's for uh, bring the bill, then yeah, Yelm should have some sort of benefit as well besides just obviously having child care, swimming pool, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The um, other thing I did want to mention is while there might be other projects uh, for YMCA, South Sound YMCA, um, 
he, the CEO has committed to me that they are very still interested in and committed to, to Yelm, um, regardless of all of those other projects. This is still one of their um, cornerstones that they're going to be focusing on. <clears throat> well, for them, as a business perspective, it makes sense. It's, yeah. This is going to be one of the fastest growing areas in probably this side of the state. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And not to, is there any other questions on the why? Or, I, I didn't. Not that I can formulate at this time, but yeah, I'm trying to. Sure. Kind of formulated. <laughs> and feel free to ask me too whenever if you want. Um, the other thing I had been reaching out to is um, talking with Indigo Multicare, and um, they're currently looking to build a Yelm. So if we can get urgent care in Yelm, I think that would be also wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it's very early stages. They haven't reached out with any permits or anything, but they're they're looking at. Is there care. a top location, or is that too early? That's what they're looking for right now. Well, they should put it right where the medical center is. Yeah. It it's the no-brainer. Yeah, they, they don't know what's going medical closet, so you can see them. I mean, Lacey, it's next to uh, the Walmart in that little um, and Mod Pizza. Store. Yeah, and then Salon. Yeah, you're talking so, about like walk-in emergency centers. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, well, urgent care. Yeah, I mean, they can do quite a bit mm -hmm. there, but it's, it's a walk-in. It's not smaller. like an emergency room. It's no yeah. trauma center. It's just there's like six rooms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Indigo is really great. I love yeah. multi care. Yeah, it's good. good Anything business. else? Cool. Okay. Um, purchasing policy resolution, Stefan. So I have emailed these out to everybody, um, but I just wanted to bring it up tonight because there were questions. <laughs> it's crazy. He's getting up. He's getting up. I'm not plugged in far. <laughs> the, the battery. Just, just, just turn it on. You know, that one works out. Yeah, that one works. How do these people see it? Is. How do these people see it? I think turn around. Yeah. Turn it around. Yeah. 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 So basically, um, what resolution 629 is, is we're adopting a purchasing and contracting policy. Um, the city hasn't really had a formal policy, and it's something that um, the auditors highly suggest that we have. So really, um, it's directed toward the purchase of goods and services um, using an open, fair, documented, and competitive process. Um, I worked with a CPA on this to make sure that our policy is in compliance with the latest applicable state laws and regulations, because all of the different um, bidding requirements and purchasing requirements are laid out in the RCWs. So this policy reflects those RCWs. In addition, the policy takes into account that the city uses the MRSC small works roster. They maintain those rosters so that we don't have to um, maintain them in-house. It saves us a substantial amount of staff time. And I think it's it's a it's a scale, and I think we're around the hundred dollar mark or so for to participate in those rosters. So um, I just wanted to come tonight and ask if there were any questions on the purchasing policy. Um, it's pretty it's a pretty lengthy policy. It does have um, um, at the very end of the policy, I have a couple different tables just showing the different. Oh, yeah. The different thresholds for different public works projects, purchases of goods and services, um, projects that might have a single trade or need a multiple trades. Um, it also will address architectural services, engineering services, and all that sort of thing. So, um, were there any questions on the purchasing policy that we need? You sent this out a couple weeks ago. Yep. And then we also, the second table in here really outlines who, who would, um, so say we go out and we do a project like the water reclamation facility, who's going to sign those invoices and the dollar thresholds for who can sign what. So mm -hmm. obviously the lower threshold invoices, we would have maybe a manager, whereas if it's something over you know, a couple hundred thousand and more, we would want the mayor, the city administrator to sign it. So, um, 
And you said this wasn't in place before. There wasn't something like this. <laughs> we had, we had um, kind of standard procedures that we followed, but we never had it like in written form like this. And so this is just taking the most current laws and regulations and putting it in written form. And you're going to, going to see that I'm going to be bringing forward quite a few different policies throughout the next year because we um, we just it's good practice to have everything in writing. Yeah. So I totally agree. Thank you. Yeah. And just be just be clear on that though. The hundred that over a hundred thousand, all that's any of those major purchases. Those are all approved by council. That any just, purchase yeah. that's approved in the budget by council. Right. Is this? Hey basically just staying like up to those dollar amounts the department's gonna do without doing a bid process is that so like this first one in-house public works projects of a single trade if it's um under seventy five thousand five hundred we can do it with city forces without calling for bids and quotes and then it kind of goes what is city forces city staff sounds cool like forces yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you join us. <laughs> All of us. So if there's no questions on that, I'll pull up the next resolution. Side question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do we utilize city staff for as much as possible anyway? Yes, I believe we do. I that's would assume it's case. cheaper for us to do it ourselves than ever bid it up anyway. Right. Yeah, some some specialized stuff we obviously contract out, but the vast majority of things that are on public works folks can take care of. Yeah, like we have our own engineering staff, but of course, like when you're going to a big project, like we need to hire that engineering staff, like for those reclamation facilities. Stuff, so, but yeah, we do try and utilize city staff whenever possible because it is much cheaper. All right. So resolution 627, we are required by MRSC when we use their um, <clears throat> small works rosters. This is their template resolution that they asked us to pass. We actually um, had passed a resolution 535 several years ago stating that the city was using the MRSC small works rosters. But MRSC has now updated their resolution, and so therefore we're bringing this forward to have ours updated. And then we'll, when we pass this, we'll send it off to MRSC. So basically, this one just lays out um, what MRSC does for us and what we can use those rosters for. So, and you said there was a cost to <clears throat> It's a sliding scale. It depends on okay. your population. And so we're around $100 a okay. year, I believe. Now, MR is what is this a list of contractors that are approved? Right. So they make sure that, um, like, a contractor is not on the suspended or debarred list, um, that they have their proper licenses and that sort of thing. So if a vendor wants to be on one of the small works rosters, they would contact MRSC and go through the process to be vetted to put on their rosters. And so those are the only people that are allowed to get city contracts? If we're going to do a project and we want to use a roster, then we would look at those rosters first. I don't think it requires us to only use those rosters, but it's a way to um, to save us time in having to go out and do like a formal bid if we can use the rosters. So, and Cody, you have more experience with it than I do. No, you're exactly right. Yeah. It prevents us from so if we want a small product that's you know sixty thousand dollars and we don't want to go through a bid process, we can use a small works roster and go here's a company that specialize in it, we can use them off the small works roster and that's legal. If we have a big project and we go out to bid to it, and anyone can apply for that. And then we vet them through our process and bid process so they can get their insurance, everything. So this is typically just for smaller projects. Yeah, that's right. Small works, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And all the cities that belong to that use the same contractors in that pool. Uh, right. So all the cities that belong to the pay into the membership mm -hmm. are all looking mm -hmm. at the same. Rosters. That's a pretty good deal for that. And, uh, you know, if we're doing a project where it's grant funded, um, it's really important that we use 
a vendor that's in good standing mm -hmm. because say yes. we go out and we contract with somebody, but we miss that they are on the suspended list. We could not only lose that grant money, but we might have to pay it back or mm -hmm. possibly not get any more grants. So it's just, it's a safeguard for us mm -hmm. as well. So go on the Angie's list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll bring these forward for um, a motion on the 13th. Okay. Any other questions? Should say like it's a membership fee they got to pay? Mm -hmm. $100 a year, roughly. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, uh, <clears throat> the fee adjustment resolution. So many. Cody, um, this is a big one. Woo! Buckle up. Might be here. Mm -hmm. So, in front of you is um, the resolution as it stands for your next council meeting. Obviously, it's flexible. I decided to break everything up in tables. So if you look through it, you'll see table A, table B, table C, table D, table E. Yeah. So if there's a table, you're like you know, the council doesn't want to do this or whatever, then that's easy for us to change. Um, majority of these fees did not change, but we're putting all the fees in one spot. Because what happens right now is we'll go and look for a fee and you'll find a, you'll find a number and then you'll look at another fee and it's in a separate resolution, but the, it, there's so many, there's like five different revolution, resolutions we're pulling fees from. So this has every fee the city uses in one spot. So that's kind of also what we're doing is updating all the fees to be in one spot. So anyone that comes after us and go, hey, look at resolution 628, all the fees are there. So we have so many fees we have to organize them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and that fees have been passed over years and years and years. I mean, all the way back to, I think, resolution 359 was the first time we set uh, you know, a fee schedule. And so you have that one, you have 428. None of those got repealed. So that's the other thing that happens. We have four or five resolutions to set fees and none of them are repealed. So in truth, we could charge any of those fees what we should be charging is just one. Yeah, but it makes things a little confusing. So all the fees are listed here. I know we talked about individually ones. The only thing that you're gonna see new is the uh, table B, I believe it is, which is all of the parks and community center um, rental rates and fees. Those are brand new. I know public service committee, you have looked at those, but the rest of the council has not. Some of these fees are just restating the fees in this roster. Some are new fees. Um, our communications recreation coordinator worked all these out kind of with surrounding areas, what was going on, um, what they charged, what we charged. The thing that we had seen a lot of is that um, over the time, our community center example this year, we spent about 70 to $80,000 in maintaining the community center this year. That's electric, that's fixing things, whatever. We've only brought in about $15,000 in revenue. So we're about falling $65,000 short. That doesn't include staff time. So you have all the staff time that isn't calculated in that number. So we're there's a huge gap. Obviously, there's going to be a gap. It's community center. You're supposed to have a gap. But how big does council want taxpayers to fund that gap is your call versus people who live? Yes, come from um, In reference to table B and the community center as well as the parks. Yes. Uh, I'm not seeing anything for blatant damage. I'm not talking about accidental damage, but you know something occurs that you turn and you go, uh, no, you should not have had that fight there, breaking the tables, chairs, and whatever else. Uh, where, what will cover those costs? So there's the community center deposit that is required. It could be put in this fee schedule, a deposit, but the deposit is fluctuated. I think, what's that now? Uh, 250. 250. So there's a deposit, and that's if you something is damaged or broken, you would not get that deposit back. Mm -hmm. That's part of the community center rental. Um, the parks don't have a deposit. I don't know if that's something council would be interested in adding. It could be as, added to those, right? The parks do not have a deposit. Correct. So the parks, we could add that if council would be interested in adding that. Yes. Council. Okay. So I I have had a couple of people reach out to me from the community about the, about the park. Mm -hmm. I think, um, so the community center, I completely understand. So the park, if I understand, is going from zero to $100, correct? Correct, there is no cost around the park. Correct. Okay, so the concern is the people that reached out to me were saying, you know, they want to have a birthday party for their kid and it's expensive already. And to throw out another hundred bucks is a lot of money. And the fact that it is a 
you know, it is a city park, it's a community park. Um, I guess it just, it does seem a little, it's like, you know, we're going from zero to a hundred and a hundred dollars to some people is an awful lot of money. Um, is there, was there any consideration about doing just like a deposit, like a $200 deposit, if you mess everything up, you know, you don't get it back, but was there any discussion about that? So I have, there's two parts to your question I'll answer okay. both. The first one is, it's still gonna be a first come first serve basis. So if okay. you wanna go and set up at a table, you can do that and you're good. Now, if the park is completely rented out that day, then you wouldn't be able to go there and set up because there's vendors and stuff. So someone having a birthday party can yeah. go and set up at a table or set up in the pavilion if it's open. That's totally fine. And not, not and, not, and, and not, pay. not pay. It's first come, first serve. It's not reserved. It. It's okay. only so very similar to, I'll just reference okay. the rack. Um, all the pavilions in the rack is first come, first serve, but they can also be rented out. So if yeah, you go there and it's rented there. and you see a time, you can't be there. But if it's not rented, you're first come, first serve. You can go set up in the pavilion. Okay. It's mainly for the bigger events and stuff. Yeah, but I think yeah. it's confusing because there was a post on Facebook. I don't know if people saw it that has stirred up a lot of uh, a lot of stuff about, about <laughs> but, fees. Or, yes. yes, about the park um, fees. So, There's, it's, yeah. I didn't see the post, but I heard about it. Oh yeah, it stirred up quite a bit. What yes. other comments are made on that? Um, just that that they can't. A, a lot of it was they can't believe that the city is now going to charge and you're going to go from zero to a hundred, but that makes sense, and I didn't realize that. So yeah, the, and the yes, goal okay. was the big the big events is we have sure. we have to provide staffing sure. for the big events. It's it's regardless of whatever happens. If that person brings staff or not, we're going to provide staffing because it's a city park, right? And but so we go ahead. I was just going to say, but if a, if a parent says, you know, my child's birthday is on June first, and there's you know, it's not barbecue rally, it's not anything, mm -hmm. they can get up at five in the morning, whatever, go there. Stake yes. it out and they're good to go. Exactly. Okay. And we've seen that happen yeah. now too. Yeah. And if it's booked, you put a little sticker saying this is reserved by. Yeah. If we so do they... a booking, we'll have a, I'm not sure how it'll look, but a signpost or something okay. that says today is barbecue rally. This park is reserved. So sure. if someone comes and they go, I'm setting my birthday, they know they're going to have to okay. leave in three hours when the barbecue rally. So well, council member has respectfully has his hand up. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. And again, in reference to the parks, um, I know like Yelm City Park, a lot of work was done to put in the sprinkler system, a variety of other things. That's why we can't have the carnival rides on there anymore because they're too heavy. They will create the damage. Uh, is the uh, plumbing system for the sprinklers and everything, is it protected enough that if uh, people come in, drive stakes, as you put it, you know, put up their mm -hmm. canopies or anything else like that, is it protected enough, deep enough that uh, those should not damage anything or? Again, I'm just concerned mm -hmm. about you know, somebody goes in there, throws in a one foot stake, and lo and behold, it's the only spot that there's our pipe and or damages a sprinkler head or something like that. How do we go about protecting the taxpayers for something like that? Yeah, so well, the park rules don't allow you to drive stakes in there. Um, sometimes there is a need, like some events will have a need for that. Um, like, hey, I, we're going to have to set up a big stage. It's going to be heavy. Can you guide us? And then what we'll do is we can mark the only part that's damaged normally is sprinkler heads. Okay. So we can mark the sprinkler heads before a truck comes in and drops off something, and then they can set it in between the sprinkler heads. That happened before um, if a stage comes in or something like that, jazz fest, barbecue, rather mm -hmm. they bring in a stage. So we mark them out the sprinkler heads. But a normal person, if they put down a tent and do sandbags, they're fine. It's when they drive those straight stakes down, they can hit a line, but stakes aren't allowed in the park rules. Okay. So we, we've been... They've, Everyone that's used it has been pretty good about not staking. I don't think even this last year we had anyone that staked any of their tents. They all put them on there and they put weight on the, uh, the legs. So I'm just trying, I'm, I'm looking at concerns. Mm -hmm. of, you know, how do we go about protecting, you know. But that could have happened before. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, yeah. Well, no, but now we, we're starting to finalize all these things are in place. I'm looking for, as he said, there's other resolutions. They may have been in those variety of resolutions. Now we have one, one thing and it'd yeah. be nice to know, hey, you caused damage and this is, you know, how we go about protecting and being able to make sure that we are watching out for the vandalism or, you know, somebody does something that should not have been done with yeah. damages to the park. Yeah. And the park rules are codified. So the park, like what you can and can't do in the park is code. Council had passed it in the past. So we, we use that as a guidance, like, you know, no off-leash animals and non-off-leash areas, even though people do it. Um, once we have our dog park up and running, but there's stuff like no driving stakes, no driving vehicles, no, no sliding down the fitness. No, no, yeah, that one will have to be added. <laughs> You're allowed to have a little barbecue, aren't you? 
Yes, uh, there's no open fires, but you could have a barbecue with charcoal. That would be allowed. But you wouldn't be able to have a giant flame barbecue. Nice. That's why we're filthy. Yeah. 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 That's good to be. And then I still don't know what you were going to say. <laughs> Um, back to uh, sides and roofing here. Yeah. Two questions. Number one is roof, we roof commercial based on project value. What is that rate? It's so, not made up in your head like, oh, this is what the million. I'm going to charge them um, 500. No, it's per, it's per, per um, is the project. value set. I'll put the value in there the next okay, time. It, it is, is a value set. Okay. I don't know the number off the top, but it is a value set. Okay, then the second is why is it 125 for signs but only 50 for roofing? Why aren't those like why the why the difference there? Uh because sign we have to check electrical, we have to go out there and make sure the sign is electric sign. Yeah, there's okay. it's, so there's it's a bunch of different sign. things. This is electrical, okay. Correct. Then that makes sense. I'm like, wait yeah. a second. So don't mean this. <laughs> yeah. Did you have something? Mr. Boyle? Mine was back to the parts there. Okay. Um, I don't know everyone else who is, but I don't think we should charge the bigger people. But what? This is groups, yeah. Or for individual what? Indi like individuals. But they're people. The deposit, that's that's different. I don't think we should charge a rental. If they want to reserve it, then they go through the channels to reserve it. But I don't think we should charge residents to, to use the parks or the gazebos or whatever. Um, and even including the the community center. Now, the commercial end of it, when businesses come in and use it, or big groups, mm -hmm. yeah, do what you got to do. But if Joe Schmo that lives on second wants to use a gazebo, all you should have to do is pay. If there's a deposit, you do a deposit and reserve it. But they said it's still first come first serve, and no, no, I'll talk. If you want to reserve it, you could. Well, I just don't. Yeah. I understand it's first come first serve, but if say if Josh wants to plan a birthday party on June fifteenth at three o'clock from three to five, Josh should be able to walk into City Hall if there's a deposit for it, pay the deposit. And reserve it for that time period, but if you live in the city, you should be able to use the damn thing without having to pay more for it. Now it's different when a group comes in or some corporate event or whatever the hell else is going on. Because so they're making regardless it for a profit, of right? regardless so of how many people to make are a at this party. Either Twenty profit people of like... it or they're not the ones that paid to build the damn thing. True. Yeah. No, I, I'm just looking for some clarification of the individual. Uh, you don't see for hundred dollars. I can come in and I can say I get the whole park. Here's a hundred dollars. I want from one to six hours, and it's all mine. Or is it one little bench? Can we let Lynn? Because I know you had something you wanted to yeah. say earlier too. So that really is focused more on events, or if you want to run the park. But someone could You're, do it though, correct? Do the whole park? Yes, including the splash pad. In no, the playground? No, 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 not including the slash. No. It's still a public park. Right. There's nobody that's going to say this is a private. It's still a public. There are still people who, are, who will be there. It really is set up more for events that do create more work to maintain them. Mm -hmm. So um, let's not refer so to it as a group then, but an event. That's a different thing. Because well, group yeah, says sounded individual. like a. Here, yeah. Here's, what, here's what I'm a, asking about is that it was stated yeah. during the whole discussion here that anybody can come in and grab uh, a bench area where there's the seats or can go and grab something. But then if somebody says hundred dollars, whole park is mine, right? Versus hundred dollars the gazebo, the covered area, hundred dollars for a benched area, hundred dollars for a certain area. That's what I'm looking for clarification of is what's that hundred dollars give you? And is there because if, because if somebody pays a hundred dollars and somebody comes in and says, "Well, this little area wasn't reserved," it's like, "No, no, no! I paid the hundred dollars for the whole park." <laughs> that, that, so that, that's maybe the it needs to be because, like, I ran out a thing at yeah. Rainier Vista, I, the one shelter, and it's a hundred dollars, but I know they post it 
Yeah. So. And and what I was going to say earlier when oh, you yeah. made that thank you. Um, <laughs> you said you could show up at five o'clock in the morning, stake your claim, you're good to go. Yes, uh, until that time that it is reserved. Right. So okay, and that makes sense. If you right. show up at five o'clock and you're saying no, I'm going to have a birthday party at one o'clock, right. but there's a reservation at one. So then somebody somebody wanting a birthday party, let's just say they're trying to, you know, for a young kid, so maybe they're not a whole bunch of pre-planning. They call you on Thursday and say, is they could just call you and say, is anybody reserved the park on, or whatever, on Saturday? And you can look and say yes or no. And they probably then have a good chance of getting it and getting it for free. I mean, it- They could say, yeah, is the park reserved on Thursday or Saturday? From, from one to three. From one to three, I will look at the calendar and say, no, there's nothing on the schedule. Do you want to book it? They'll say, I'll take my chances. Right. Perfect. Right, and zero dollars. I, okay. I think this whole thing really needs to be revisited and not be the whole park. It needs, yeah. It yeah, needs to be- Yeah, I think so too, clarified. If it's that car, like, if it, the only the only time in a, the whole park would be it is a large event, and a large event should be paying a hell of a lot more than three hundred bucks. Could we um, get information again on what the pending completion of proposed projects for the pavilions are? I don't I don't think I was involved in that. Yeah. No. <laughs> so the okay. pavilions. Um, so pavilions right now, public service committee is still kind of deciding what they want to do with that. There's a couple different ideas floating about what to do with pavilions. One large pavilion, four small pavilions, or no pavilions at all. Oh. And then, or some amalgamation of those three things. So um, that's what we're still deciding. We haven't come to that. If that's what this was in there, just a spot for us to be able to add a fee without having to change the entire resolution and create new resolution just for pavilion. The parks committee is going to be meeting what next on Monday. And yeah, the parks be, advisory committee meets yeah. Monday. The parks public service committee won't meet until January. Yeah, and they'll be given. I mean, obviously, it's a council decision, but um, they give advisory, you know, mm -hmm. advice to us, and so they'll be making a recommendation to follow on that. Okay. And then, same, you'll see with the gazebo as well. The Cochran Park gazebo is being built in the next phase of Cochran Park, which we expect sometime next year. That's a designed to be a wedding venue, like a big, large gazebo. So that one, we'd have to figure out a pricing for that because it is a. It's going to have power, lights, everything. It'll be mm -hmm. a, a wedding venue, is our approach. So I'm kind of hearing that people want the council wants um, more parameters on what I is allowed, so. what is definitely. Uh, yeah. Well, I was uh, going to say, would it hurt to have more open parameters? Like an event is an event. That's an event. Anybody else, if the park is free, you use the park, and you don't get, you don't have to pay for it. And the idea of a deposit that you pay and get back that sounds like a lot of administrative the only, headache. The only the only place where I think the deposit is appropriate is the community center. That's fine. But I mean, yeah. just to go but on the grass and use the park. But I think the average person in town, if they wanted to use the community center for some for some reason for their family, they should not pay to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only time we should be charging something is commercial use, which in, or corporate function, meetings, that kind of crap. But all other people outside of the city. Or outside of the city. But if you have a Yelm address, you're a young citizen so inside the city limits, or well, I don't know how we determine that. Yeah, or yeah. or get water, yeah, get some parameters. Or if you have, a, if you have a city water bill and you're using it for a personal reason, you shouldn't have to pay a fee to what, preserve it. What about like a minimal fee? Just there is a lot of cost upkeep on it, of course. You know, tax for money paid for the building and everything like that. Well, but. It costs money to clean. It costs money to, to set up all that stuff. It pulls away our staff from whatever they're doing at Public Works to do that or whoever. And when you're saying a family, is there a certain number of attendees that you're thinking of? Because if it's like over 25 people, I would I I've gone, I would expect there I've would be money in the parks with 50 plus people, and we cleaned up after ourselves and didn't leave a mess for anyone. To the parks and the community about. center are different. I, you know, because that's a building and you've got power, you've got to, you've got all that stuff, the upkeep. I don't know. I think a fee for that is a small fee. I, but. I think I get the gist of what the council is looking at here. Um, I'll work with Lynn and Cody to kind of. But a big thing on the parks is specified. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. But it's, it's for the, the yeah. each pavilion. <laughs> Understood. And if we're not charging for that, would we have enough money to do better than we are now? With the, with the gap, 
Would so like I'm hearing kind of same thing is it sounds like the one thing you guys are okay with is an event charge for large events that are in the park that are making oh, yeah. profits. Oh, yes, yes. So <laughs> if we if we narrow, I mean, and we can dive into this because I want to make sure we get the we can dive into this next year and really go into the individual prices. But if we just had a rent a park for an event and put a straight number that if you're renting for an event that's large and have that as a line for any of the parks, that would lock it in. I would try to figure out some sort of scale as far as size of it. Yeah. Because there's going to be a big difference between like biking festival. Yeah. Instead of nonprofit individual and commercial, let's do attendee size. That's like going to be harder to do too though. Because what anticipated um actual uh, actual actual <laughs> well, okay. yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> a a good event coordinator should be able to generally have an idea of the based on vendor size okay yeah i'll give you an example we had an example of, of someone this year where there, we said a number like at the threshold you need to start doing these things and okay. the person said well i'm at 999 yeah i was like oh okay yeah. 999 every time it was 999 we never oh, hit a thousand and there was definitely more than a thousand people and so i want to make sure that we don't have an arbitrary threshold someone can just say a number and then they go sweet i don't have to do that because i'm under that number so that would be the only, my only concern um, the other one is Longmire Park. We do a sports rental. So there's a sports rental rate fee okay. um, that we have for Longmire Park. So I'll, if council doesn't want to do this, I will bring back the Longmire that we already currently have established and just keep that because baseball fields, we have to buy chalk. We have to buy stuff to do that. So I'll make sure we keep the Longmire Park mm -hmm. in there. If we're not going to bring this in. What does that look like right now? Um, I don't, it's not on here, but it's, it's really cheap. It's like $6 an hour oh, for a game, 20 an hour for tournament. It's really, really cheap. So we have, yeah. we, we meet with all that. Like, yeah, we spend a lot more money on Longmire, but that's okay because it gets a lot of use of the baseball league and soccer team now, and even um, the Lions Club use it for movies in the parks. So we get a lot of use out of it, which is great. Um, and the fees, this would have been very similar to what the fees they were paying. And we normally do at the beginning of the year, we go through like how many games are going to have, do their schedule, and then we price out what they're Which is the intent. Have. We don't want charge our citizens a lot of money. It's just, right. you know, that's, I think that's the intent for James, what he's mm -hmm. going after, you know, helping the people that live here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Brian, so, I know you can oh, I was going to say, it's my, I think one of the things that would clarification that will really help me out, and I'll just stick with the Elm City Park. I've been to other parks where there's specific, like, I don't want to say roped off areas, but it's like, this is your area that you do rent, you pay, you know, because there's covered and various other things there. And it's, you know, that kind of thing. With the Elm City Park, we don't have any really markings. You got a one big covered area, and now you have, I think there's like four four seater bench seats around the tree and other things. I think one of the things that would be very helpful for going to do fees, not just for Yelm City Park, but for all the other parks, we have to have a way that we can mark off what is it that you that that's your space that you can all of a sudden go get that person. Oh, out of here! They were not invited to my event. They're not part of. They're not part of my birthday party or my retirement <laughs> event or whatever it is. You can't be here. And, you know, we need to because that's when you're renting something. You're saying this is mine. This is you know, and in an open space, there are no four walls and roof. But but even like okay, so I'm gonna again use Rainier Vista, um, and I just rent that out for a club function because Yum doesn't have enough parking. But, um, yes. you know, we, yeah, yes. so we have the big pavilion and then there's grass all around it, but we don't kick people out. I mean, it's still a public park. So you have to be, but, but people, they pretty much know they're not going to come into the pavilion and eat our food. Right. I mean, you would hope not, but would, that, but you have, but what is, but if you right. don't more follow, it, you don't yeah, have no, a I understand what yeah. you're saying. I mean, it's well, costed, it's but we're, yeah. yeah. I, that's what council sounds I like. Think it would be them. what you're, if someone pays to rent it or reserve it, they're reserving whatever pavilion. Yeah, that's not, what I'm thinking. Not square footage. Of the park. You're talking yeah. about the actual like city park. Though. Right. Yeah. Not, you know, like Yelm City Park. Currently, right? there is. Currently, it says $100. I get $100. The whole park is mine. So and, if I have an event. Right. So we, that needs and, to be clear. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm And that's what I'm wondering is where do we, yeah. and even for those who hold an event, what is their limit that they go, this is roped off for, you know, and that's oh, yeah. what we've been talking about. That's what. And we're then, if we take away all the pavilions, we won't know any of it. 
Right. And then it's like garbage takeaway and water use, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, and power. Um, those are the and the things. bathrooms will be open. Mm -hmm. So okay. when events, so right now, what happens or what should happen when the event comes is, um, the event they come to us, they come to Lynn. Um, she kind of vets the event, and then we give them some parameters, and they meet with us, and we kind of go over setup and everything. We line out what their event's going to look like, and then we work with them, and they work with the city for the next three, four months as they get to their event. That's normally kind of the setup and how it works. Sometimes it's not that great. Sometimes it's, hey, I got an event, and I want to do it in two weeks. We're like, ah, and then we kind of, they normally, we help them out. We haven't had any event in the park that has not followed our rules and kind of done things. There's many people that pushed back and wanted to Kind of go against them but everyone's followed the rules and kind of helped us and worked with us and called if they needed help and vice versa it just as get to the point where some were our it's a lot of staff time to go and man these events on a weekend so we're paying overtime or comp time for people to be at the events because we want the park to still look pristine and we don't and if they don't have any staff to work the park we know that the park isn't going to look pristine so that's always our goal when these events happen is we're going to have people there to make sure the park looks well we just want to make sure we recruit but it's, it's usually not the group that gets blamed. It's the city that gets blamed. Well, they have no one to help support it. So right. and that's normally how it works. But I, so what I'll, it sounds like what I'll do is we'll keep the current, because we have a current rate structure for community center. We have a current rate structure for Longmire Park. Those exist already. You guys have already passed those. I will just bring those into this, and then we'll keep diving into the community center park discussion to go forward. There's a lot of events coming up next year, and we were trying to figure out this before those events happen. So what um, the current resident, the current way it works is council has to approve any event in the park. So any event that comes to the park have to come to the council and you have to approve it on the consent agenda. If you remember, you know, we had last year, we had all the events came at one time and you guys approved them all at once. So that'll probably be the way we'll continue it if council is not on board with passing. What but we let's see if we can, I mean, we have one I, I think we can still get this done. Um, we're not that far apart, I don't think. If we add what the council has been saying with the boundaries, with parameters, the, what yeah. does this hundred bucks buy me? Right. I mean, yeah. it's this is next week too, though, so we're going to have to really get on it. We have to submit it tomorrow. Yeah. That's so the agenda packet. We'll okay. we'll work on that. I, I it just we'll needs to be it, yeah. there. Be, it needs to be more specific when it comes to the parks. Yeah. Okay. Only yeah. That's the that's what, what it is is it. you're not like with these things. You're not. It's not that you're renting the entire park. You're reserving this. The big long building. Whatever. Or the, <laughs> and do they work. specify on the facility use how many attendees they expect? No, we don't yeah. ask them. Uh, the current facility or park rental thing has like what parts do you want? Pavilions, kitchen. The kitchen doesn't exist anymore, so it's that pad up top. Um, bathrooms, playground area, I think. There's a couple of spots where you check things that you want in the park. And that's the only park that has anything, um, has a checklist. The other parks, Cochrane does not. We, I mean, we hadn't had any events at Cochrane Park until this year. This is the first year we had events at Cochrane Park. And they did extremely well, and they all want to come back, which is great. And they did a really good job taking care of the park. It was awesome. Cochrane, um, but there's no way to recoup any. I mean, it took a little bit of staff time picking up garbage and stuff for them, but it wasn't a big deal. Longmire Park, same thing. We had events there, which we don't have an event list. We just have sports. So we tried to just kind of like, well, you're using the baseball field, so we'll charge you what the baseball team would have used if you're setting up a festival. So it's just trying to figure out how to get those costs when like baseball team pays, but this event doesn't really have a scale. How do they pay? So it's just trying to figure out how do we get that money and how do we recruit that staff time that's being used. But everything else though, all the, all the other fees, all the other rates like that. When do we expect to see regarding events for next year? Um, anytime. I mean, those come in all the time, though, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've been for already. Yeah, but if we do this correctly, I, we won't have to do every single one, like approve every right. A, B, and C. It'll be standardized. You fit the mold, you can do it. You know, mm -hmm. you follow the, the rules and expectations that council lays out here. It's, but, okay. but yeah, we'll try to do it. With, we'll try to um, incorporate this stuff if we can tomorrow. If not, it will probably push back to January. Um, but I, I think we're pretty close and obviously this is staff doing this, not me, but, um, I, I think we're pretty close to it where we can maybe get in in the next week. If not, we'll, um, we'll just take it off, but, um, either way, we'll let the council know. I would like, I know you guys just really quick, the other tables, oh, because yeah. there was C, D, and E. I know you focused a lot on the community center and park. C, D, and E were kind of different fees. We had talked about those. If you notice on the court fees, I put. If they win the tow hearing fee, the money would be returned to them. That was something I had 
Heard express. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and I kind of clarified that the civil appeal fees, criminal fees, we don't actually set those. And the reason why we want it to say follow county fee schedules, county sets those prices. Mm -hmm. So right now we set them at a price and we have to keep charging that, even though county is charging us more. So we put in there follow county, then the money adjusts whenever county adjusts their fees. And same with passport fees. Instead of setting a price, we just follow the Department of State fee schedule and then they just tell us what the money is. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure you guys are okay because those are new fees as well, C, D, and E. Um, e was that video redacting charge for the cameras and the so. I don't think we should have made I think it's pointless. Just nickel and dime people. Which fee? The late fee. So under utility fees, there's late fee, five dollars. And right now we don't charge anything. Right. And it's been that way for. You send another notice, uh, like a paper years. notice. We send paper notices. So the biggest thing that's costing us is noticing, sending paper notices, phone calls. They go out sometimes mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah, yeah. trailers, yeah. emailers. So it just sends, it costs us more money to get yeah, someone to this. Work, they bus leaves. Yeah, no, I so You late? You so the late fee also, you have to think about it. We're not supposed to get up the bus, right? Right. So if somebody is two months late on their utility bill, we're basically giving them credit right. for that. So it just, to the public, it's we're not we're recouping something for lending that credit of two months or right. hours, hours, hours. interest. Yeah. Yeah. No one, yeah. How how would anyone ever get two months behind on the bill and still have connection? Oh, they still have the connection. They yeah. just can't they use can't it. They can't use it. Yeah, and this so well we, minus the sewer. The sewer we can't shut off. So they we have people that haven't paid their bills in four or five years. Currently, still can, yes, that can still flush their toilets because we can't legally shut their sewer off. How many people or resident or homes or three well, five hundred? <laughs> I don't know the number off the top. There is there is quite a few that we can't. That. We're not legally allowed to shut off their sewer because it creates an ecological. Of course. Oh, how does someone not pay their sewer bill when it's all in one bill? They don't pay their water bill, so they don't have water, but they still can flush their toilet. So they can just dump water in their toilet. Oh, right, and they get their water in the toilet. Yeah, I mean, buy water, dump water. I don't know what they do. I don't go to their houses. And yeah. like, how are you flushing your toilet, sir or ma'am? Yes. Um, where, where are you getting money? Yeah. People are talking. Yeah, interesting. So many ideas. It's interesting. I'm not interested. Yeah. Good. So, <laughs> yeah. That is unfortunate. It, that it's a hassle. I, I, I mean, get it. There's, there's late fees on everything. Else. So, yeah. table C, but though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, late fees are So, table C, the rest of it looks good. What will happen when you see the resolution is you won't see the up from. I just wanted to put that so you guys could see what the original right. price was. Mm -hmm. So, those will disappear and you'll just see the numbers. Um, table D, everybody was good with all this. Let's, let's go back to TLC real okay. quick. I, I don't want to explain take more issues, is. but um, there was a couple people or maybe one that talked about the new count setup from zero to 20. Just oh, want yeah, to make sure that, that everyone was on board. I didn't think we were doing that. I thought we were. <laughs> but we were doing it because of, uh, it's not just a simple thing. If I walk in there, give write down my name and go to the, turn on my water, it was somebody had to go out there, do a, a meter, meter reading to say when it started. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to input into the system that was not. Yeah, that's cost um, of business. It's like no, that's not if you called up Xfinity and they charged you an amount just they, to they, they, an account yeah, for you. They, 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 so, they do. They do. Because I just literally just so you talk to the wrong person. They they charge a set of yes. I've never said it. There is a set of fees with Xfinity. Sorry. What service provider? You tell me. I've never paid one. I've never paid one. It is negotiated. Well, this is something, though, that it sounds like there's a couple people that don't want it. Um, I'm not hearing a majority. I'm outnumbered. We're good. Okay. okay. All right. We'll leave that on. Move on. Twenty bucks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're on five hundred. Then we might. Yeah. <laughs> table D. Hmm? Issues. Table D. That's I mean, good. Table D. Court hearing. Court Yep. We did change yeah. that because yeah. the council's um, what council wanted on the bill hearing fee. Yeah. Yeah. It's that last one. No. Public records request. I think that's. I do have a lingering question. If you mentioned like the movies and one of you mentioned the movies in the park um, this mm -hmm. past year, were they charged a fee for using Longmire? We did not charge Longmire. Okay. Got it. I have a question. Going back a little bit. With permits. Yep. 
We have a permit approved to fix here. Where at? I saw it somewhere. It had to do with plumbing, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, $7. $7. $7. Yeah, those are current, those aren't new, those are already in place. What is is that for new construction? New, new construction, usually, or is that technically like if at my house I decide I want to swap out my faucet, technically, I'm supposed to get a no. permit. No, this is new construction. This is for the incoming, in other words, yeah, if, uh, when if you have a house that has never been on the system. It's forty dollars plus whatever that fixture of putting in the meter and everything else. Once so, once past the meter, you can do whatever you want. So what is that? For, so is that forty dollars for every fixture in the house? That's what that's forty dollars plus fixture fees. So forty dollars for just getting a plumbing permit, and then okay. you pay seven dollars per fixture. Okay. So like what they'll do is when your plans come in, your housing plans, they'll be like your housing plans. You go, you have five sinks. Yeah, it's thirty five bucks. So you pay seventy five dollars for your plumbing. And that's because we do a plumbing inspection. Okay. And that's new construction. Now, if you wanted to go and like install a new bathroom so in your whole house, you should technically what these fees are for is paying for the inspector. M majority of them are paying for the inspector's time to look at that. Yeah, they are. Yes, we said that. Anything else? <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> the ADA is Thank you, Cody. Is we, Pat Pat online or I me? Oh, well, it says Pat. <laughs> it is. It was Pat. Pat okay. Uh, okay. Hi, it's me again. Hi. Um, it's me. Um, so I'm going to cover two things. So that we, as you guys know, council, you passed the ADA transition plan contract and the local road and safety plan contract. Um, but I wanted to just kind of tell you why we did those things because a lot of times it's why are you doing this? Why is this? So Pat wrote me up a nice little script. I will read it to you. Um, because his words are better than mine. Oh, it's great. So it's two different ones. So I'm going to talk about ADA transition plan, the local road safety plan, then I'll answer questions. So we passed this before we knew what it was all about. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about. Yeah. 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 Recent surveys show mixed results of the plans being completed and implemented. The Federal Highway Administration and other stakeholders have recently re-emphasized this requirement and have determined that beginning in 2023, to be eligible for future federal funds, local agencies will have to be compliant with the ADA transition plan in place. So that's why we did it, because we have to, we have federal funds, we want to keep getting those funds. The ADA transition plan consists of the following elements, a list of physical barriers located within cities right of ways, a detailed description of methods to remove these barriers, Scheduled for implementing these steps, a schedule for providing upgraded sidewalks, and a record of opportunity given. An ADA transition plan for CDL was currently prepared by King Technologies of Rochester, Washington, through a professional service agreement signed with King Technologies on November 2nd. Once complete, the plan will be presented to City Council for adoption. Expect in mid-2023. Okay. So this, you and Joe talk so fast. <laughs> we should, it's, I mean, what? Yeah. it's back to what we said. You need to be a consultant. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea with this is, so the ADA is your access to your walk, sidewalks and how people that don't maybe have full mobility are able to transition those sidewalks and move from spot to spot. So the transition plan guides us, looks at sidewalks, look at areas that maybe don't have that transition or ADA compliance and tells us how to fix them. And then we implement those and then we do it. And then we get federal funding. Brian. Cheers. Brian, Brian has a question. Oh, Council Member has. Sorry. In reference to what's going to be presented to us, the uh, consultants, they are looking at everything and they're going to tell us what changes need to be made. Correct. Okay, so what will come out of this will be like, you'll see a map of Yelm with probably red, green, yellow, and it'll be yellow is stuff that is close to detriment or partially detrimental. Green is great. And red is stuff that ADA people cannot use correctly or transition. So it'll be a big help in knowing those things to start that process. I wish it was <laughs> um, this one's not that much. This one... <laughs> The money we're going to make on it, I think it's 30000 total, but they do an assessment of all the sidewalks in Yelm. They look at all the stuff, um, but the amount of money we get in federal funding <laughs> outweighs that every, I mean, we got how much in federal funding? 890000 just for the dog park. Um, and Does it so, include school district uh, it, offices and like all those buildings as well? The that sidewalks that go in front of them, yes. It won't okay. go into the school area itself. Got it. I think it was 550 for the dog park. Yeah, I would have done it for 25. Yeah, I would tell you. Maybe next time. I would have come with a 
<laughs> I don't know if council would approve it. Like, hey, that, yeah. that sidewalk didn't need to be ground down right there. And so, uh, I can't get my wheelchair over there. So local road and safety plan, the other one. Um, we're required to approve a local road and safety plan on a plan in order to be eligible for receive state transportation funding for projects containing any safety related items. The local road and safety plan is a risk way to identify and prioritize locations for roadway improvements. So this is moving from sidewalks to the road. Um, this process includes analysis of crash data, identification of potential countermeasures, and creating a prioritized list of roadway locations where safety factors are present. Um, a local road and safety plan for the city of Yelm, Washington is currently being prepared by SCJ Alliance. You guys approved this on November 2nd as well. And once complete, it'll come to you guys probably early 2023. This one is more about, so if you have an intersection like Say Crystal Springs, you're like, man, cars are flying up and down. It's a horrible incident. This will tell you like, yes, it is. This is what you can do to fix that. Or this intersection needs to a traffic light to help move stuff around because people are getting wrecks here. Or this intersection is great. Do more stuff like this. Or this needs a roundabout or a merging diamond. Do they also look at the timing of the lights and things? They won't because we don't control any well, of the lights. We, in town. we don't even know the intersections that are an issue. So why are we paying someone to tell us what we already know? <laughs> you're not allowed. So just because you know, yeah. you're not allowed to make an adjustment to the intersection. You have to prove that the intersection yeah. is doing something wrong. You stand there and look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Agree with you as someone needs to stand there and look at it that has. Has traffic been running better? Well, we got a place with 30 grand. <laughs> an intersection we already know is an issue? No, and these are all yeah. the intersections yeah. in the entire town. Yeah. So it's not just, so I know what you're yeah. thinking is like, I can stand there and go, man, traffic's really bad. It's 5 p.m. Yeah. fix this. But they're going to come out there and go, traffic's bad at 5 p.m. Here's where the cars are coming from. Here's what you can do to improve it. Here's things you can do. And they can prove that to state so we can actually make those adjustments. I can't, we can't just go out and stick stop signs or we'll get sued. We have to like do, oh, you can't just go out and stick give a stop them any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> we would get sued for sticking a stop sign on a city street. If you stick a stop sign on a street that hasn't been studied and a car wreck happens, yeah. you can be sued for that. Yeah. For a stop sign. Yeah. If you stick a stop sign on a street that hasn't been studied, stop through, signs anywhere. They can be like, I think I'm, you know, I think a stop sign. Yeah, throw up a triangle sign that says, like, I forget the oh, word. No, new, new, new <laughs> traffic deer crossing. Something ahead or whatever. Oh, traffic revision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, you know how you do it. A traffic oh, revision, though, you need. Yeah. If you yeah. throw in a new stop sign, you throw in the, new tra the traffic revision ahead, you stick that down there for a couple months, you're good to go. True, but you need to. Eventually, people figure out there's a stop sign there now. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, but you need to have proof that yes. the stop sign is going to work there. You right. can't oh. just make it, can't build a rock without proving why, that it works. If anyone wonders why so much money gets pissed yeah. out here. Oh, uh, yes. What's uh, this report, too? <laughs> Uh, this one it'll be in early 2023. Yeah, you'll have it in early 2023. It should be in the next few months. It's a pretty quick area. Did no, you have think. something where you just no no no? I'm just listening. Okay. <laughs> okay. Crazy thoughts that should do. Okay. Any so, more questions? Comments. Oh, so be free. Be free. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm Don't go far. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 So, you, can, you can order them on Amazon. <laughs> Okay, council member initiatives. And there's the board. Me. Oh, oh uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I know that maybe it's something some council members are going to bring up, but want to talk briefly about the Algiers, near Algiers Road, um, right by where the old video fantasies be. Um, what are you talking about? There's a road um, right by the post office. That it's a private road. Video. Um, a lot of people think it's a city road. It's not oh, a city road. road. Yeah, with yeah. a big pothole right in front of the post office. It's canyons. What? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Canyons, yeah. yeah they're right. Canyons. And um, they are closing that road. It's a private road. They're closing it. Um, it's going to be closed here. Right next the tenth, it said next week. The tenth. Yeah. Oh, they're fixing it. No, there, were, there was a sign. Or they're no. just going to close. They're just going to close it the permanently because they don't want to fix it. Exactly. Yeah. And so we are. That makes uh, a lot of sense. So we're going to announce, you know, make yeah. sure the public knows about it and um, all that on our Facebook and social media and all that stuff. Um, this isn't a city road again, so we don't have much control on that. Um, so just to clarify. Yeah. It's not a city road. Correct. So even if they closed it and people drove on it anyway, the cops can't really do anything about it. Unless the owner wants to call. Are they going to let like the? I mean, I don't know about that, but they're going to barricade it. 
They're not going to yeah, say yeah, they're they're gonna gonna sign it yeah. rope codes. Yeah. They're going to say stop. They don't even want yeah. to take the amount of money. They don't even want to patch some potholes. You think they're going to pay to put some barriers up? They've already got them sitting there. Yeah, oh, so, they do. Yeah. yeah. Show well, so much I'm paying attention. So they'll put some barriers up. Um, I think there's some conditions the city, not much, but the city has to have, be able to like access what, or emergency block? usual stuff like that. So we've been discussing that. that. Um, but other than that, just want to give a heads up to council. The post sure but we need to announce it. Is it eco blocks that they're using? And they're using the concrete block. Not too eco. Are we going to decide what we're going to do? No, that's what they're called. It's a coyote. What's that? Are we going to decide if we want to do something with that? We're going to have to talk about whether um, I mean, we want to do the purchase of it, make it a all, city road. Just, I mean, is that on the else, table? We can talk. Are you, I don't think it is at this point, but oh, we can have those conversations. Was. That they wanted Who to sell it to us. I don't know if they want to sell it to a public service meeting. Well, they're one of them. Are Margaret, to use some brother, and some back from his block. Wasn't during the city. Multiple he people. Oh, 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 between yeah. Yeah. between those, those people who own half the damn town, they can't pave up the road. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, okay. Next. Next. Okay. Any other questions on that before I move on? Yeah. Jesus. Let's fire it. I wasn't going to bring will, it up at this meeting. <laughs> will we be talking about it? Yeah, absolutely. We can talk about it. Um, if you guys when, want to talk about it, absolutely. Um, there's interest in purchasing it. Um, first, before anything's done, we should probably do a study, though, in which we're already kind of looking at to um, determine how much it would cost for the city to upgrade it to standard city standards. That's... It's, that's what we need before we talk about it is the yes, cost. Right. Right. Yeah. Is there any state funding? We, we back that a little bit more. There could be. Yeah. What's that? What are we yeah. talking about there? That same the road they're going to close. Yes. Thing, yeah. bro. We just, I thought we moved on to something else. No, so, no, no, no. Sorry, no. I brought it back. So we're just saying we yeah. need to find out how much it costs <laughs> to, <laughs> to bring it up to standards <laughs> like, yeah. before we just die. But I took fire. It's about 650. So it's a sizable mm -hmm. amount, um, yeah. but we can absolutely have this conversation though, and we'll probably will at a recent in a near study session. I don't think it's, um, you know, you should but yeah, I would, yeah, in January study mm -hmm. session, I would say we put that on the agenda. But then, was there talk of possible state funding and their possibility for any? Yeah, we, we could absolutely go for state funding. Right. I mean, the capital budget could, and the could set up a little toll. Put this in perspective: six hundred fifty thousand oh, dollars is another street for us too, like a another yeah. street, um, sidewalks, streets. Um, but this is an important street, though. Yeah. But they were is an important street. Well, it's wouldn't they? You're going to find out real quick how important it is. They, I'll tell you okay. that. Given <laughs> who those guys are, they probably built something and developed that whole area. And that's what, yeah, yeah. that's another part of it. It's we can have this conversation though at a study session, and um, we'll, yeah, we'll we should it for January. Should. Uh, want to put this on for January study session, please? Were you listening? <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on. So, also, as uh, many of you know, the Christmas parade was canceled and all that. Got a lot of flack for it. Um, there was a lot of different reasons. Mainly, their biggest reason was the lack of participation in it for um, for different floats and all that. The other secondary was because the football team went to state one and that was um, an escort, right? The police escort out of the. Yeah, that wasn't. No, separate thing. So, so Chris is the part. Some there were going to be people in the parade that were um, part of the school because the bands, because of whatever. Mm -hmm. So that would have been maybe even less than what we would have had. I think maybe what a dozen or so, probably if that. Yeah, um, very small. It costs a lot to put these on. A lot of planning logistics go involved or involved in planning these parades. So those are some of the reasons. Um, we did an after action report today and we'll have some more um, coming up about not only the parade, but the, um, how Christmas in the park went. There's a lot of things that we're going to do differently next year. And we're already starting to plan on it this right now to make it um, a lot better. It, it was good. Excuse me. It was good, but we're going to make it even better. Um, doing, I've taken note from some of the council members that reached out to me one-on-one -on -one saying what they would like and what they didn't like about it. So we're gonna incorporate that and um, yeah. But moving to the football celebration, which is something that a lot of folks have also been hearing about, um, wanting a parade for the football folks that first time the city of Yelp, the Yelp tornadoes have gone to state championships and won. 
um, it, well, to make the state and then to win it. It's a huge accomplishment. One of the things we're doing next week, we'll um, be having a resolution for them, celebrate um, some, of the, some of the athletes that will be in tennis as well. Um, we had a meeting with them yesterday with the schools, um, see what we could do to recognize these students and also the community members and the businesses that supported them as well. And likely, um, and this is none of this is finalized yet. It's just really just discussions. Um, have something, a celebration in the middle of January um, where we celebrate the, the students, not just students, but the band, the, all of the other groups too. Anyway, so with that, right, what the city is going to do though is um, put a banner, congratulations, you know, city, um, young tornadoes, and little things like that just, just to recognize it on the city level. So the um, proclamation and the, a banner, that's kind of our what we're doing right away. And then the celebration, um, schools, community will happen in January. Questions on that? Yeah. Um, for the Christmas in the park, I really think we could do better on those hot dogs. Yeah, I was they hoping for, uh, just, yeah, stall. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're gonna do better on that too. I know it's, I like a little more gourmet food. <laughs> Not gourmet, but so a little more. They were, cut, like, yeah. they were the color of this table. That's what they're supposed to be. Organic. Those no, they were. They were tofu. No <laughs> way. They were tofu dogs. They were. Yeah. Vegan. We're a lot healthier these days. I don't no believe way. that. For a no way. Don't do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no tofu dogs. I mean, at least um, when Costco would be under the those. Uh, is somebody going to approach Ladonna about her uh, the idea? Yeah. You just can't I've throw a parade mm -hmm. down the street because you want to. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it needs. We need to reach out to her but if she wants to do a, she parade, have a permit I mean, well, she's starting a committee oh she she's going to do it she says she what said, kind of parade she wants people parade? to enjoy that <laughs> anyway i don't yeah, think yeah. we need to bring attention to that but yeah brian oh, that was hilarious in reference to the football celebration uh i'm just it's just a little concern i have is how much is other than the city banner and proclamation what else is the city considering doing because I think this is, I, I think it's a great feat, but it's the young community schools. And it needs, they need to be the forefront of it. They, if there's any costs other than the city banner and proclamation, they need to be putting that money up more than the city. Because, yeah. okay, because my concern is that Yelm is a small portion of Yelm community schools. Yep. And yeah, they're taking we, the lead on it. We're okay. just helping out. Okay. We'll do a police escort, stuff like that. Okay. No, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, very I, I, little things. Yeah. I just want to make sure we aren't all of a sudden fronting no. something that is not, you know, I might help with some fireworks or something like that. But okay. no, it's, it's very minimal cost. I, I okay. under, totally understand. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> these schools are definitely leaning at those. They're being that, charged. That, that, they're the ones helping. We're sure yeah. there is just support. Yep. Okay. Is there a landing spot for this parade? Like usually, then everybody there's has been to some here. That are, yeah, there's been some that have been. Uh, that we need to make sure though that the schools are on. Um, they get confirmation for it before we start announcing all that stuff. Yeah. I'm just trying to let Kelsey know just what what. It's in the works. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. There will be more details as the weeks um, go on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Anything else on those? Um, just lastly, the intersection field, as some of you may have seen um, here, over the power went out. That was due to transformer going out. Top caught fire or something. Um, but basically, the transformer failed. It doesn't usually happen, but it did. Um, they had to replace the, the pole and the transformer. It wasn't something the city had nothing to do with this. Just Put that out there first. Um, PSE was very, very good at um, keeping us in um, up to date with what's going on, the current status of it. So we appreciate that. Um, but something that we might consider, we are considering, because um, it was it was just pitch black. So we're considering buying like maybe some four way stops. It, this shouldn't happen all the time, granted. But in case of this an emergency like this, we we do think that we should um, have something. Either a traffic signal, um, temporary traffic signal like stop signs that'll let up your stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get sued, Joe. You didn't. You walk around Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good point. Well, we're going to illegal about it. But, uh, but yeah, do something like that. 
or um, if we can't get it, if it happens right away, we consider putting a police officer out there controlling traffic and stuff like that. But yeah, it was. Well, wasn't well, there the PSCs so helpful yeah. with the community? Well, they uh, what's that? So the PSC is so community oriented. They are seen yeah. their commercials. Uh, we, yeah. we should get uh maybe they should uh put up that traffic sign for us. I mean, yeah, I, this doesn't happen often. Um, yeah, that's what they thought it happened often enough. I don't think is it really justified? Yeah, yeah. Speaking about it, because uh, there was no officer there for quite uh, I think we need to have a response on why it took so long for an officer to get. We to... determined it wasn't going to be. Um, so first of all, we, we did discuss it right away about having an officer on there. We were we had one planned for the morning of Monday for the heavy traffic flow. At the time, it was during the weekend. We didn't think um, it, it. We only have so many officers, no, no, so, you know, so we would have had to pull one in over time, bring it out um, if we could have got someone out there. First of all. And then um, it would have been slow during the nighttime. It well, it's just we could also, so but we also could, but we also could have reached out to because that's five ten five oh seven state patrol. State patrol should have also been reached out to to provide somebody to help us out because I read some of the things that were going on of people just running through the intersection, and we got very lucky that there was no major incident that caused a lot of damage and loss of life. So we need to. And seriously, you know, no, it doesn't happen that often, but we need to have some kind of plan. And that's what, that's we, that's what I just talked no, about. No, no, I'm just a four-way stops by a patrol officer. If this happens in the future, this is a good um, right. learning experience. I mean, this hasn't, I don't think this happened where uh, intersections feel like this for, for that long, but um, I mean, it was, it was probably less than, it was definitely less than 40 hours, but yeah, well-received. We are learning from it. We are, um, we're going to do the four-way stops, the first the signs. Um, it happens on a busier time, um, and it was determined it wasn't as busy during those, um, they were off peak hours for traffic. Uh, I, I, I did see some of the traffic, and I get that there was a small percentage of people that were blowing the stop sign. Uh, well, as a, it's supposed to be treated as a four-way stop, some people were blowing it, not many were, um, but I mean, most people were doing it the proper way, but um, if you don't know the rules and the traffic laws in the state of Washington, you shouldn't it doesn't drive. help. You shouldn't drive. <laughs> um, but yeah, well received, um, Governor Huss, and we will um, we'll discuss further on it. But we're likely to order those. Signs off, so. I like that. No, thank you, John. I appreciate that. James has yeah. He's got a good point. Those are it's it's two state routes. State patrol. State patrol should came state out. State patrol should. Yeah. yeah. Did, it's a, it's, did we contact the state patrol on that, or would they have? State patrol didn't come up, they turned it over to us. And we do have all the public works are certified flaggers. Obviously, have police officers that are flaggers. So you have the ability to flag. It's just that you gotta you gotta weigh out how long it's gonna be. And, and there was a lot of mixed messaging as far as when it would be fixed. And it's gonna be fixed early, and then it got pushed out and it kept bumping, kept bumping. So I talked to the police officers a couple times over the weekend. They were prepared to help out, and like you said, Monday morning. Um, you know, the issue is like you said. You treat it like a four-way stop. That is the law. The law is you treat it like a four-way stop. And so, you know, in reality, yes, to help traffic flow through there, yes, but to make sure, you know, people treat it like a four-way stop, you shouldn't have to have an officer in the middle telling people to treat it like a four-way no. stop. So, my, my, my concern is that why did we not at all put anybody out there after 48 hours? In particular, it was on, on, on a particular Monday morning when Traffic is all of a sudden starting to back on by Monday morning. Okay. That's why. But he also said they came up, they have a plan. They, yeah. well, they no, no, we have a plan right right now, going forward. My concern is what why did we not have something? You know, how long how long were we willing to wait before Monday we morning? Yeah. Right. But I'm just as I said, just there was there was still you may not Monday morning may not be is not only the peak time, but also Sunday evening is peak time because people are returning home from wherever they went. And you know, we it's at what point do we sit there and go, well, intersections out, powers out, everybody knows the law, four-way stop, and oh, this is a major intersection of 510, 507, downtown center of Yelm that backs up traffic of how many cars that we've all sat there on a Sunday trying to get from high school to Safeway because everybody is returning home from 
numbering year. But uh, did you see how backed up it was? I it wasn't. Okay, it wasn't really I'm just up. I'm just saying that we no, but it's I I don't know. I guess I feel like we may need to move forward because it it happened. It was bad. There were they had no control over it. I agree that there probably should have been an oh, officer. Okay. Um when I went through it, it wasn't bad. I mean, I know the law and they have a plan or they're working on a plan going yeah. forward. So I, I looked at the worst. I mean, yeah. I, I went out there multiple times. The worst I saw it was at the bowling alley and that was on Sunday evening. Um, but other than that, it worked for the, for the most part. I saw the vast majority of people stop and treat as a four-way um, light or four-way stop. Um, we, we did make that, I mean, sometimes those decisions are hard, you know, we, no. what, what, whether or not to put an officer out there, spend the money on it. Um, it we determined, you know, that it, if it was needed, it, was, it wasn't 48 hours. Um, the, it was Saturday, early Saturday morning. Um, when it went out and Sunday night is when it went, um, when it got completed where the um, PSE finally fixed it. But we would have done it if we would have put an officer out there on Friday or Monday morning um, just to help with the flow to the biggest traffic. But yeah, we, we get it. Um, like I said, it's a good learning experience for us. Um, in the future, we probably will. We might do it earlier. It, it all depends, all situational too. Like, you know, Todd said, it's, we were getting, we were told it was going to be such and such time. So, I mean, it, it's just a kind of um, general rule. Yeah. PSC tells you it's going to be back on by X time, yeah. times that by five. Yeah. We were fortunate that nothing major happened, though. Yeah. yeah I but we learned from it. So, we didn't have to act report on it. We got it. Um, we're, we're doing better on it. So, we will be better in the future. Yeah. And with that, um, I want to end on pause now. How about um, I don't think I mean pause oh, here. Yeah, there's nothing oh. positive to say. Um, we'll do better on hot dogs, <laughs> please. No more tofu dogs. Um, gosh, I want to hear some good council member initiatives now. How about that? All right, Josh. Um, I'm not so much an initiative, but a question. Are you ready to sell that boat in here, Cody? That you call a snow making machine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you ready to sell that yet? <laughs> you, did you want a snow making machine? <laughs> well, I don't know. I can't use it, so probably not. <laughs> but somebody might. We can get our money back on that. I don't even know what you're talking about. The city has a snow making machine. Why do we have it hasn't been making? used in yet. We did. Uh, we didn't buy it this year. This is before. You made, you made like for snow cones. No, no, to make snow. snow. Oh, to make snow. Oh, yes. Last year was not <laughs> used. This year has not been used yet. What did they use it for? You did the time of plowing on it. It made snow and plowing. And then this year, we did yeah, snow two times. times. We made snow that um, the Friday night before the park, we made snow. Cross-country skiing. We made snow. Um, I told to test it. Interesting. <laughs> okay, in the future, like, Obviously, this is not that I want to buy, but since we have it, I think we could do some fun things with it. Maybe sure. like do a. We could if it works. If it's cold, well, if it's cold enough, that's the thing. If the weather is dry and it's cold, if it's raining and it's warm, it's not going to work. Your, but your tent's right on about it. That's why it's a big moving gear. Do you have anything else? <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, we're going to push that next conversation. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to bring this up or if the mayor was, but um, getting the homelessness task force together. I thought I thought we were going to talk about that. Yeah, go for it. I'm talking about it. If you want. I'm totally talking about it. If you want, it. yeah. <laughs> you brought it up. So it's the three of us are in there, Blair, Crossman, and myself. And I feel like right now is an important time for us to get back together or together the for the first time. Okay, back. Have you guys been <laughs> in on one. one before? No. So none of us have had a meeting for the homeless oh. task force before. So maybe just having one to start. Yeah. What do you guys see? Yes, you need me. Shoot an email and schedule one. Yeah. Okay. And, on, and on that um note, um, <laughs> you say what are. Are you here? 
Tomorrow? No. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hey, work. you work. Where? I could so, jump so. too. <laughs> Maybe in a couple. Oh, well, it's Christmas time. Um, you yeah, email Cooney out. Will, Cooney will really figure that out. Okay. Um, one thing to note on that, Ashley is the chair on this, but we, because of our, um, um, I don't want to say bylaws, but the proclamation that we passed on council, it is two council members on there. Um, so voting at least. So you two are still the voting members on that committee or task force. Ashley is the chair. Um, she'll run it and all that stuff, but you two are the actual votes on it too. So, mm -hmm. so she'll set the agenda and do all that stuff. Hopefully, no. Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Thank <laughs> you. Anything else? That that was top of my list. Okay, thank Brian? you. Okay, Brian. Uh, I was just going to initiate some stop signs, but I'm just kidding. I got it. I got it. Yes, I have two things. Um, I'm not the only one that was asked about this, but I don't want. I wanted to go back and revisit the gentleman that asked about the bathroom signs in the library. Did anybody oh, answer no. him? Uh, what are we going to do? What do we think? No, I saw Cheryl the other, day, the exec director for the TRL the other day too. I didn't bring it up. I forgot. Um, you know, we can say I talked to uh, some people about it. It's it's policy above TRL. It's it's been that way for uh, over a year. Bye. Thanks for coming. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. I thought you were leaving. <laughs> like he's taking a picture. <laughs> I just have to go and have a conversation with uh, everybody left. Some, of the, some of the people in reference to the library, and uh, it's been the policy of TRL. So it's not just Yelm. Okay. Yelm just finally implemented it. Are there? Is, I haven't been in the in the library. So are they single stall? Or are they multi stall? I was under the impression they were open. Boys, girls, everything. No, they I mean, have, I mean well, we go to stalls. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. They, yeah, they have five stalls. Like there's two stalls yeah, in one bathroom. Well, in the same bathroom. Yes. I mean, this gentleman was, was bringing up. Well, we give money as a city to the library, and so we have some say in it. And he was worried for the safety of his kids and other kids. So are we going to at least answer this gentleman back something? Or could you write to him back? Since he, well, he said, I never received an email. Yes, yeah, so it seems like only some of us did. Yeah, I got it. I didn't get it. I got it. I mean, we should, when people ask us, we should address them back. I think that's yeah. polite. I will, um, Personally, I don't think the only time there should be Whatever it is, the gender inclusive restroom is the same yeah. single person, uh, single occupancy bathroom. Right, I, I, I agree. Kind of way. But if you are trans, most people, if you're trans, however you live your life, that's how people look at you and treat you anyway. So it's none of my damn business. Well, it's just how I, I'm, not the, I'm not on the train that there's tons of wackos out there that are looking to do things to kids in the bathrooms. And if it does happen, I will be the first one to go to prison. So I will reach out. I've I read that guy's email. I understand his concerns, but at the same time, let's not get too crazy about it. Like just live your damn life and quit being. Okay, you know, but if you could just tell them that yeah, it's I mean, their policy, out. not ours. So just write that down too. Yeah, I did. Okay, number two. Um, had a constituent call me yesterday, very, very concerned. Did I know any updates about the airport that might come to Thurston County? And because I was at the Nisqually River Council meeting and we had a whole plethora of people talk about it, um, I did know some things. And my take from it was that kind of not going to happen here, too much wildlife corridor, too many tribal issues. So that's kind of the way I was feeling. And he's like, well, I was reading that they're going to make a decision on the location by June 23rd, J June, June 2023, which is like in six months. So uh, the thing is, this stuff, they, they're not advertising it. That's not on the news. They're not talking about it. So we don't want things to just slip under the table that we don't know. So yeah. because this person was very concerned, he lives in the area. He's got property in the area. You know, it's, it's a legislative issue for the most part. Um, they're going to be the ones that are deciding on it. And yeah, they're oh. going to be deciding next year, he, likely. Um, he pointed you know. out that the people making the selection were not from this area. They were from out of state. They uh, had nothing to do with the tribes, that they were very third party 
far removed from the situation. I think I what think people that's... need to understand is there's going to be another airport and they will dwindle it down to two different locations. And the one here in Thurston County makes more sense than the other one. And people aren't going to like it. It is what well, it is. Pierce County is not very far away I'm either. I understand that. Yeah. It's going to happen 20 years from now, but it's going to happen. And it's also not going to be the international airport. It's going to be a two runway regional airport. It's not going to be six miles, which the radius circle shows. It's a small regional airport. Like in Olympia? Like that? Yeah. It's going to look The thing is, we've already stated it is a two runway. That wasn't the recommendation. That is what was being asked for is where are we going to put a two runway regional airport? And the thing is, is that everybody's blown it out of proportion. It's They're looking big, for somewhere to land 737s other than SeaTac. Those are big planes. I mean, yeah. when when uh, when people ask us, and we're supposed to be in the know, what do we what do we say? It's just not in our hands. We do we don't know. It's too far away. We don't. We, we, don't, don't, we have no say we, whatever yeah, as the um, cities yeah. in this area. It's really, yeah, it, it's up to the city. Um, They're determining all this stuff. Um, you're going to see more about. You're going to hear more about it after the session during the session, um, but yeah, these are all recommendations to the legislature. The, they're official recommendations and all that, but at the end of the day, the legislature controls the money. Um, they control what, where it goes and all that stuff. So uh, we have a lot- Wherever they decide to go, it's gonna get eminent, eminent domain and you're not gonna have a choice in it in. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, oh. Thurston County is very against that it. You know, I wrote a letter against it with, along with the, the county, I signed on to that. Um, the RPC is considering a letter. Everyone's considering letters. Everyone's against it. No one wants to sit in their backyard and all that stuff. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But um, if I hear anything new from legislature or okay. from a local, I know our local politicians, um, local legislation, our local delegation of legislators are against it. They're fighting against it, but so is a lot of them too. So, but Andrew Marcus, who's our state rep here, local, he's on the transportation committee's ranking for house. He has a lot of pull. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. And last thing on a more mundane level, Cody, those uh, city lights and the nice globes, uh, when were those going to get bulbs in them from PSE? Was that a PSE the issue? The ones down here on mid -drive? Yeah. So right. we replaced the ones that were didn't have electrical problems in the base. So the ones that aren't, uh, there's like two still out, I think. They're, they're electrical issues. We have to replace them. But we got new when I came through tonight, there was only one on in the corner by the um, the old the bank uh, the the old theater, and it was a green bulb. Oh. It's not our downtown is not lit up very nicely yeah, at all. We just changed the bus rooms. So they were on I went this weekend, and they were all on except for two that we had. So I'll, I'll check. And okay. See if okay. Through. Thank you. Anything else? No, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to bring up one thing that's not going to be popular. This uh, be no, no, no. That so it makes me look good. Parade. <laughs> um, so every year, my club, we partake in the Montecito Parade, Lighted Parade. Right. These are nighttime parades. And the city of Lacey, we did last night. I know that they're a logistical nightmare. That's what we're talking about doing for next year. But Lighted Parades, the people love them. Yeah. They are fun. Um, Montesano is a very small town. Granted, though, they don't have, you know, we're, we're a thoroughfare. I get that. <laughs> Todd's going to be looking like, like no more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's what we're pushing for next week. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just because um, even trying. the one in Lacey last night was very short. And, you know, they had the sheriff department and everything. And of course, they had to block the streets, but it was just, it's so, there's so much. I mean, like, I it's, exactly. at night. I think it's, it's at night. Yeah. 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 So, oh, well, I'm going to, I want to do that too. No, that I will do, but I'm talking about getting the whole city. So we are yes. trying okay. to do that. And it's not just us. There's other partners involved too, okay. but um, Sign that's up. something that I'm pushing for pretty hard. Yeah. And um, yeah. But now that we have a snowmaking machine, we could have, <laughs> oh, yeah. is it something that you go. have to push hard or it's like and media you have to get everybody into it? Well, I don't want to speak for other groups, but there's a lot of, yeah. Really cool. yeah. Well, seems like doesn't mean you're speaking for it. Yeah, I, I don't want to speak for, for the other groups, but I know for the city perspective, we're going to push for it. Um, it's not just us that puts on these things, though. Right. There's other partners, so okay. we got to get buy-in for everybody. I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for them. Okay. Um, I don't think it's anonymous, you know, that we want to do okay. uh, um, a light parade, but 
I know I do, and I know a lot of you do. And um, so, yeah, yeah, I've called pictures from the Eatonville one. It's nice. Yeah, yeah they're, they're cool. They're right? yeah. a lot of fun. And well, Main Street, Street yeah. Associate yeah. puts yeah. on the Puyallup yeah. one, and I used to work there, so I know how so much goes into it. Months yes. and months yeah. of thought. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, parades take a lot of they coordination. Do. Oh, and they're the doing it at night. I, yeah. Now in the police so force, things, I know yeah. it's. I know it's, it's tough. Lot. I know. And yeah. and I understand that, and I know because I brought it up a couple years. We literally met with about this and talked, discussed yeah. this yeah. today. Because yeah. I, mean, I did my own a couple yeah. years ago and didn't ask. For <laughs> Remember that? That's the way to do it. Yeah, <laughs> but but we went through neighborhood because we had about four right people. in front of city hall and then anyway. in the car. Okay, that was all I had. I'm glad I'm glad you're yeah, right. we are. Yeah. Because if you look at Todd's parades. face, you know, from the police perspective, they're like, oh, parades. Oh, oh. it costs a lot. It, I mean, I didn't realize how many ops for, um, was it parades we were talking about? Yeah. For, yeah. Who yeah. the officers to do that? No, I, not just yell, obviously, yeah. you don't have any, but for surrounding jurisdictions. And I understand. It's, that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, and I know it's, it's crazy. Costs a lot. It costs yeah. a lot of money to do it. It, it, so it does, and I get that. So. But the people want it, so uh, yeah. we'll um, we'll do what we can to do. This. Okay, um, we're done. Um, before, oh, no, sorry, not. sorry. Before the, before December, there was National Night Out, and I know that was kind of a block. Are we putting any more into that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, big one. Awesome. Yeah, we're we're gonna do a lot of things different next year too. We we learned a lot this year. Um, you know, we're talking about Veterans Day, um, like city um, led efforts and all that. I know it'll be right. good for you, Brian, some of the other council members. Um, we're going to take a bigger lead in a lot of these different things. We have a recreation um, coordinator that can do a lot of these things for the city now. So from from our side, um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to be pushing for a lot. We're going to do a lot of better events next year. I mean, this year went good too. We had more events this year, I think, than we've ever had. Um, you now, for at least the last two years now, but for a long time though. I mean, it seemed like every weekend we were we had something new, something big. Um, I think the only parade that was canceled was the Christmas one, wasn't it? So I mean, we had one, you know, didn't work out, but all the other ones were still. We had a good year, I thought. Um, but yeah, we'll improve. We learned. We've done act yeah. after action for the important learn from our mistakes, how we can improve, and next year is going to be bigger and better. Yep. Anything else? Yeah, one more thing. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Just close it all. Right? <laughs> no, aren't we? I know that I had a calendar in here, but I can't find it. And I'm asking these questions because I'm new. No, you're good. Um, isn't there a retreat planned at some, or we need to plan, yeah. start planning? Yeah, we will soon? start reaching out for that. We're just starting on, we don't. we're trying to finalize for the staff, um, staff retreat. Base. Never been. Well, let's do it. Vegas no. trip. No. <laughs> I'm Jake. What do you mean no? <laughs> I, it's, it'd probably be cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm sure the public would love to have us need to go to Vegas. Anyway, no, um, really but yeah, we are planning for that too. We'll, tell. we'll be reaching out here probably early January to get dates from um, council. So the next study session, possibly? Uh, probably not. I mean, we'll be reaching out for dates first, and then we'll do the actual planning and stuff, what we want to discuss and all that stuff there. Okay. But yeah. Thank you. That's really it. I okay. got no more. Anything else? Right. Well, <laughs> one, well, two, three, going, gone. Go on. Uh, Turn us off. Let's put that one for that.